Hey, church family. Hope you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy. It's certainly good to be with you on this Wednesday, and it's especially good just to stop for a few moments and to take a break from all that's going on in our lives and in our world and and to be able to come together, even if it's online, to be able to come together for just a few moments and and to spend some time in God's Word and, and, and really in communion with Him and fellowship and devotional time uh, with each other and, and ultimately with Him. And so I'm glad that you have joined us uh, this evening or today or whenever it is that you're watching this. I heard a story about a, a grandma and a grandpa and their young grandson. The grandson, who's around five years old or so, came to stay with his grandparents one week for the entire week. And during the week, uh, grandma and grandpa always had the typical Southern breakfast, you know, eggs, bacon, sausage, uh, biscuits, gravy, coffee, orange juice, you know, all, all the big fixings, nice big breakfast. And so that's what they had Monday through Friday. But on Saturday, uh, however, they usually had just a, a small breakfast. And so they just had cereal and, and usually either coffee or, or, uh, or juice of some sort. And so as they sat down to, to breakfast that Saturday, uh, their grandson was a little surprised to see the breakfast table seemingly quite empty compared to what he had experienced throughout the week and all the fixings that came with the normal breakfast during the week. And so when grandpa asked him to say the blessing that morning for breakfast, the little boy kind of hesitated for a moment. And then he prayed this prayer, dear God, we thank you for this breakfast, even though it's small in Jesus name. Amen. You know, we have so many things that we can be thankful for. However, if we're not careful the challenges of our moment in time and where we are in this particular moment in time can wilt the joy right out of our thanksgiving. And certainly everything going on in our world and our country right now with, you know, specifically with COVID-19 virus has heightened that challenge. Our church gatherings are different. Our social gatherings are different. Even our family gatherings are different. Many have lost jobs and income during this time, certainly just the threat of the virus itself on those that we love is is very real and growing, it seems like, each and every day, not to mention all of the political and social division and unrest in our country. And, and so what ought to be a very special and thankful and blessed time of year for so many is a time of grief and, and sadness and uncertainty. And these concerns can easily give way to fear. And with the negative orientation of many in our world and our media today, our hearts can, can be seized by anxiety and dread and fear, and our prayers soon become a laundry list of things for God to fix. I mean, just listen to our words, help me, give me, heal me, rescue me. And certainly, we are to turn to God. Make no mistake about it, I don't want to belittle this point, that we are to turn to God honestly and openly about the burdens of our lives and our hearts to, as Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 puts it, to receive mercy and to find help and grace in our times of need. And so God invites us to pray for those things and then to, to come before him and lay those things at his feet. But with our cries for help, we must also not forget the importance of being thankful for the incredible blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, to be clear, God isn't calling us to some false or, or forced thanksgiving or some kind of simplistic relabeling of all the bad stuff that we experience in our lives, but he is calling us back to the deep spiritual wells of grace that we have in Christ Jesus. And just give you a couple of things to think about. From prison, mind you, from prison, Paul writes this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Paul also writes this from Philippians chapter 4. Uh, this is verses 4 through 7. Also from prison, he writes this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Because we have Jesus, and because he has us, our future is secure. And all the difficulties and struggles and challenges that we face in this life, while they, they may be challenging, they are also temporary. And so with this hope, we are to reframe all of life in a chorus song of thanksgiving. As Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, this is from the message translation, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thanksgiving. Let the word of Christ have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, everything you do be done in the name of the master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. In Jesus, the liturgy of our lives is thanksgiving, not just one day a year, but every day until we are lost in the thankful wonder of his presence at home with him forever. But in the meantime, while we are here, we also pray, yes, dear God, we do thank you for all the ways you have blessed us, for they are indeed not small. Hope you have a blessed day. God bless.